Hello, and welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I am the pastor here, and welcome. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks, and I am the deacon, and I'm very happy that you are able to join us today. And hello, and my name is Wendy DeVoer, and I am the interpreter for today. Today is Sunday, March 28th. And today is Palm Sunday. We remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem humbly and with honor shown to him. Our focus today is breaking the chains of our expectations of how things will go so that we can celebrate what God brings to us each day. And this week is a special week in our faith. It is the week we especially remember how much God loves us. God loves us so much that Jesus gives to us communion. So we are fed in body and spirit. We celebrate how Jesus invites us to remember him in worship on Holy Thursday. and we will share communion together. So this Thursday, prepare your supper and set your tables and join in worship. And that is at 6 p.m. Thursday evening. And this week, we remember how Jesus was willing to give up his life for us. On Friday, April 2nd, in worship at 6.30 p.m., we remember Good Friday. But that Friday, long ago, was a dark and hard day. We call it good because of God's love. God in Jesus acted out love and goodness for the world. God in Jesus loves us so much that God will die for us. We will share the Good Friday worship from 2020 because it was so powerful and it was in the bold sanctuary. And then next week on Sunday, we celebrate Easter. And the hope and promise that death is not the end of our story. Resurrection and new life continue the story. And next week in worship, we will celebrate the Lord's Supper.
Now, as we enter into worship today, please light a candle at home. Pastor Michelle and I will also light candles. And now a reading from Psalm 118, verses 19 through 23. Yes, you, O beloved, open to me the gates of truth and justice that I may enter through them. Praise be to you. You are merciful. Love is the gate to life. Those who know love shall enter through it. I give thanks to you, O beloved. You answer our prayers and invite us to new life. You are stone which the builders rejected. You have become the foundation of our lives. You are the eternal listener. You are marvelous in your, our understanding. This is the day which you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad this day. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one. Return to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you. Prayer of the day. You are blessed, Jesus our King. You come in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Even if our hands and voice were silenced, your creation, earth, rocks, animals would praise you. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. My friends, this week, uh, I just want to add a couple of notes again about the gospel lesson. Um, things that aren't especially obvious when we um, see and read this lesson. So the first thing I want to note is just or raise up a question is why do people throw their clothes on the donkey and on the ground? <clears throat> 
This is an action to honor Jesus. And it's to honor Jesus as a king. Those clothes that people throw on the ground and put on the donkey protect Jesus from, uh, from touching the donkey and from touching the ground. This is one way we still see a lot of times how we honor kings and very special leaders. And so as Jesus entered Jerusalem, this is what his followers did. The next thing I want to just note, the next thing I want to note quick is just about why does Jesus ride on the donkey? And this is a, um, an action that Jesus takes pointing back to an Old Testament prophet. Um, Zechariah is the prophet. And in that Bible book, there are some signs that are shown that help us know who kings are. And so Jesus knows those scriptures. And by riding on this donkey, he is proclaiming that he is the promised king. Jesus is a very different kind of king than we're used to. But he is the kind of king that we have been waiting for. And then the last thing I want just to note is that the people in today's Bible lesson that you'll see in a moment, they call out, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we still use this language. Uh, right now during Lent, we're using, before we take communion, we use return to the Lord. But usually we use the holy, holy. And we say, um, you are the Lord and we praise you. Alleluia, honor to you. So this Palm Sunday story helps us know where some of our communion liturgy comes from. And I just wanted to lift those things up because they are not things that probably be included in the sermon, but they're kind of helpful to know as you see the gospel lesson. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 through 44. As Jesus came near Bethphage and Bethany, towns near the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent out two of his followers. Jesus said, go into the town you can see there. When you enter the town, you will find a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here to me. If anyone asks why you are taking the donkey, you should say, the Lord needs it. The two followers went into town. They found the donkey exactly like Jesus told them. They untied it, but its owners came out. They said to the followers, why are you untying our donkey? The followers answered, the Lord needs it. So the followers brought the donkey to Jesus. They put their coats on its back. Then they put Jesus on the donkey. He rode along the road toward Jerusalem. The followers spread their coats on the road before him. 
Jesus was coming close to Jerusalem. He was already near the bottom of Mount Olive. The whole group of followers rejoiced. They were very excited and praised God. They thanked God for all the powerful things they had seen. They said, welcome. God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Some of the Pharisees said to Jesus, teacher, tell your followers not to say these things. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if my followers didn't say them, these stones would shout them. Jesus came near Jerusalem. Looking at the city, he began to cry for it and said, I wish you knew today what would bring you peace. But it is hidden from you. A time is coming when your enemies will build a wall around you and hold you in on all sides. They will destroy you and all your people. Not one stone of your buildings will stay on top of another. All this will happen because you did not know the time when God came to save you. Here ends the gospel reading. So today is Palm Sunday, and we celebrate the honor and memory of Jesus when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Now, Jesus knew that in several days that he would undergo great suffering and that he would die. Now, he could have escaped and run from this, but he chose not to. So what did he do instead? Now, I looked these words up in the dictionary and give up and surrender have a similar meaning. However, if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, there's a difference between give up and to surrender. To give up means, oh, that you acquiesce from it. Um, you don't bother trying, but when you surrender or if you're willing to do something, that action is done from your heart. So for example, there might be a father who wants to go to a football game and then his daughter says, but I need to go to my ballet lesson. So now the father faces a dilemma, but for his daughter's sake and from the goodness of his heart, he willingly drops going to the football game so that he can take his daughter to the ballet class. And there are many examples of American soldiers that have willingly gone into war to surrender their lives for the freedom of Americans and to protect our liberties. And they do this service from their heart. Well, this is also true with Jesus. 
And I found several examples and at least eight instances where Jesus, and there probably are more uh, instances as well, but I came up with eight where Jesus surrendered willingly. So the first example. God called Jesus to go into the world. And the world was filled with darkness and sin. But Jesus willingly left his home in heaven and came into the world. And he did this to save us. And this was not an easy task, but he loved us. A second example is that there were many times that Jesus had gone into Jerusalem throughout his life. And yet this was going to be his last trip into Jerusalem. And he knew that he would undergo suffering. But his heart was willing to go to Jerusalem this one last time. In this third example, Jesus willingly rode on a donkey. And he did so humbly and not on a horse of pomp and circumstance. And on Jesus' last night with his disciples, he knew that his disciples would scatter and abandon him and leave him alone to face his accusers. And he knew that one of the disciples, Judas, would betray him. And yet, Jesus invited all of his disciples to eat with him for the Last Supper. And this fifth example, which occurred on the same night of the Last Supper, a band of soldiers came to arrest Jesus, and he willingly went with them. And the sixth example, after Jesus was arrested and he stood before the high priests within the courts, and Peter was standing outside the court walls trying to keep an eye on things. And someone noticed him and called him out and said that aren't you a disciple of Jesus? And he denied it. And several other people said, yes, you are. And he continued to deny, to deny who Jesus was. And then when he saw Jesus pass by and look at him, he was grieved and he began to weep. And then several months later, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, of course you know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my sheep. Jesus asked him a second time, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know that I do. And then Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And then he asked him for a third time, Peter, do you love me? And then Peter thought about this for a while. And he realized that he was the feeding the sheep meant to share the news with other people. And that even though he had denied Jesus three times, Jesus still loved him and had asked him to carry on the mission.
And then the next morning, Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate and remained silent. And the soldiers persecuted Jesus and he still remained silent. He didn't fight back. And this was also prophesied in the Old Testament in Isaiah. It said that the person, like a sheep, and this is representing Jesus, but like the sheep, is being sheared. And the lamb takes it passively. And Jesus stood there while he was being persecuted. And he remained silent. And the eighth example is when Jesus willingly gave his life on the cross and he was crucified. And today we celebrate and we give honor to Jesus for his willingness to do all of this on our behalf and many other things that he has done. And as we've journeyed through Lent for 40 days, I've been learning through this journey about how these old chains of ours hold us back. And God is challenging us to focus on him and to let go of these chains. And are we willing to be released and to step out of our comfort zone? Some of Jesus' followers were fishermen, one was a tax collector, and the others, we don't know what occupation that they held. There was no record of what they had done. But when Jesus called them to follow them, before they met Jesus, they were just living their lives. And then Jesus called them and they dropped everything to follow him. And they began to learn from him. And they still didn't fully comprehend what he was saying or what he had meant. And then sometimes they would ask Jesus to clarify or they would ask one another. Or sometimes they said nothing at all. And Jesus continued to teach them. Now, the disciples were not scholars, but they did learn a lot. And they learned through experience. And these experiences transformed their lives. Experience is powerful. And those experiences stay with us. Now, researchers have found that many people learn more through experience by hands on or, or taking action. So for example, I used to work for a bank and I was being taught how to work on the computer 
So she sat at the computer, uh, the, the trainer did, and I stood beside her and I watched her do the job. And I had no idea what she was doing. And then when it was my turn to sit down at the computer, I finally began to understand the nature of my job because it was hands on and I was learning through actually doing it. So having a direct experience can drive the learning process. Now you might be asking yourself, so how can I learn from my experience or how can I grow in faith? But, but don't be worried about that because the Holy Spirit will help you and guide you through your experiences. And, and don't sit and wonder and wait for something to happen. Just get out there. And go where the Holy Spirit leads you. Now, Jesus told us to ask. So A-S-K. So we need to A, ask. S for seek. And K for knock. So we are to take an active part in this. To ask, seek, and knock. And when we approach God in this manner, God is thrilled. It's just like when a child is learning how to walk. You know, parents are very excited when their child takes those steps. Well, this is also true with God. That we shouldn't approach God in fear. And the more fearful we are, the less we learn. So when we do surrender, this should be done from our hearts. And I pray that your hearts are willing to move forward and onward, to continue learning from your experiences and to grow in your faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Prayers of the people. Merciful God, help us know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. 
turn our attention toward others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. Help us hold hope for one another and for the world, even in times that feel hopeless. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So please share the peace with one another. Peace be with you and also with you, Wendy and Michelle. Wendy, peace be with you and peace be with you. Each week during Lent here at Bread of Life, we put out a candle. You can see behind Dorothy, there is a um, set of uh, nine candles. And in the last five weeks, we have put out lights as we've gone through this Holy Lenten season. And as, with that, as we get close to Holy Week and to Easter, it often feels like there is more disappointment in our lives than there is rejoicing. And during Lent, we do tell this hard, hard story about Jesus, how he is betrayed and how he suffers and dies and how Jesus does this to show us how much God loves the world. And so on this day, this Palm Sunday, we ask that we would learn again to trust Jesus and that we would trust Jesus even though we encounter struggles and difficulties in our lives because our lives are not only struggle and difficulty, but our lives also include joy and new life. And so we ask that Jesus would help us to let go of our expectations about how things will go, that we can trust Jesus and that we don't need to be, try to be in control of everything that's happening. Because as Dorothy shared, when we look at what Jesus did, in the midst of struggle and suffering, he, he didn't try to hold on to control. And instead he said, I'm here, I'm willing, I'm offering myself. And so we pray this week that we can learn to be a little more like Jesus, that we can learn to let go of our own expectations and see what God brings to us. And so as Dorothy puts out another light on those candles, we together acknowledge our mistakes and our sins. And we confess that we sometimes get distracted from following the Lord. And that sometimes we hurt ourselves and we hurt our neighbors. And then we ask God for help and for hope.
Let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen. So we come again to this time in our worship where we off bring our offerings. And here at Bread of Life, we ask you to give some of your money to this work that we're doing. Because we are, as part of our faith, we're invited to give generously. And giving generously to Bread of Life means that you are helping to support the work of sharing the good news that God loves all of us, whether we are hearing or deaf. God loves us all. And through Bread of Life, we <clears throat> share that good news in, through ASL and through deaf culture. We share that good news that God loves you. And so when you give generously to Bread of Life, you help support that mission. And we ask then that you would send some money. It helps you be um, more connected to what we're doing because Jesus promises where our treasures are, that's where our hearts are. So it's not that our hearts go somewhere and then our money follows, it's that we give our money and then our hearts follow. So we ask that you would either send a check to Bread of Life <clears throat> or you can use um, an online giving option and you can find that at our website. And our website address is www.breadoflifedef.org. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us give God our gifts and pray. Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with the good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embraces all your children. Amen. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will not be voiced. Receive the blessing before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you grace and peace. Amen.
And now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.